Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at Microelectronica's Digipot clickboard. This particular model is a 10k potentiometer controlled via SPI. There's one end of the potentiometer, there's the wiper in the middle, and there's the other end. And you've got a ground pin here if you want to ground one of the pins. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, just a regular 10k potentiometer. This one you'd obviously turn. If you want to set something up remote control, you need a digital pot or a servo connected to one of these. The advantage with digital potentiometers, of course, you can turn things up and down via remote control or two buttons to increment and decrease the value in a solid state so they never wear out. So I've got some audio being fed to this potentiometer. I've got the music in here on the left ground on the right and I'm picking up the, the middle pin is running off to an amplifier via this jack plug in the background and I'll, I'll give you a demonstration. So for the benefit of new users on the EasyPick Fusion version 7 to implement these sockets up here first of all have a look at your MCU card this is the PIC32 MX460 and Microelectronica have kindly put Mozzie, Mizo, and Clock. So RG6, RG7, and RG8. So Mozzie, master out, slave in, and master in, slave out. So refer to your data sheet and you'll figure out which SPI these pins are. In my case, these serial peripheral interface pins were SPI2. Chip select on the Easy Pick Fusion version 7 is LAT C2. So, again, Microelectronica, I've got demonstration software. What I've done, taken the demonstration from the Easy Pick version 7 board and put it into this Micro C Pro for Pick 32. So, I've got a note here. So, the MCP4161, they are available in dual potentiometers as well. So you can see there, the standard definition connects the potentiometer to the supply on the board and then the wiper is brought out to one of the ADC pins, pin 2, and then as you increase and decrease the potentiometer, the voltage is read back on the port LEDs. And as you're probably getting used to by now, I implement the TFT. There's a chip select for the Digipot on the Fusion it's let's see two. So this is Microelectronica's counter and all we do is count up 255 and down to zero. I've added this string to put that counter on the TFT. I'll show you what this X is for. So hopefully you're getting used to setting up the fusion boards. All digital, they're the ports in case I want to turn different LEDs on, disabling the JTAG, initializing the TFT. So in here, we're turning the chip select on so that we're not reading the device when we first turn on and we're setting the direction as an output. So for the easy pick boards, you'll be using SPI1. So in case you've got a fusion board, as I say, I'm using the PIC32 MX460F. So serial clock two for SPI2, serial clock two, RG6, Serial data out, this is microchip's term, serial data out, which is mozzie, master out, slave in. So serial data out 2 on RG8 and serial data in, MISO, RG7. And because this is the 32-bit device, so it's SPI to init advanced, SPI master, just using 8 bits, divide the clock by 40, this is the SPI slave select disable, SPI data sample in the middle again, SPI clock idle to low, and SPI idle to active. If you get these two bits wrong, the potentiometer will be erratic. So I'm drawing a rectangle, set in a brush. Now look at these X's here. So ordinarily these would be a one, because this is in the while one loop, and I've got different colors going on. If I left these at a one, the box would be flickering. So I'll put an X here and I'll show you later why. So this is interstring counter, counter
counter string so we can see what's happening with the counter and then displaying that on the TFT and then simply drawing a thick green line which equals the counter length. So this is Microelectronica's. As with most SPIs, you ground the chip select pin, SPI write zero, which you have to do on this chip to, to write to it, SPI to write counter, SPI to write 20. Now this is actually writing to the memory. Have a look at the data sheet and then write on the counter again and then deselecting the chip by putting one there. The Microelectronica simply had FRB 2-bit counter plus plus and then FRB 3-bit counter minus minus. But what happens if you keep your finger on the button it'll count up to 255 and then roll over. And in my case, because I've got it connected to audio, I don't want it to roll over and suddenly get loud or suddenly get quiet. So if RB2 bit means if RB2 is pressed and the counter is less than 255, increment the counter. And then X equals one. So while we are pressing the button, the colors inside the box become one and they're now enabled. And when we let go of the button, that becomes static, so it's not constantly flashing when you're not touching it. So you can see, so if we're not touching the button, X equals naught. And then to decrease the counter, if RB3 underscore bit and counter is greater than zero, counter minus minus, and X equals one. And then small debounce, 20 millisecond. So now you've seen the code, let me put it into practice. So if we increment the counter, you can see the counter is actually going down and the potentiometer is going one way and then press the one underneath, it simply comes down. Now if you see the flashing, if I didn't have the X there, it would, that green line would carry on flashing when I let go, but letting go it's nice and static. So that's what's happening. So now with the courtesy of YouTube and this piece of music, I'll demonstrate the Digipop used as a volume control. So that's obviously the volume all the way down. I think that's loud enough. soft background music. So in this demonstration I'm using it to fade in and out the music but obviously you could feed this to a, a, a power supply regulator anything. So if you want to add digital controls to your project have a look at this Digipop click. Thank you very much.